I was leading jockey around Plumpton for 11 years in succession. So that's my claim to fame, in fact. What you call a claim to fame. Okay, Ray, um, I understand that you joined the racing fraternity of Lewis Racewell after it closed. That's right, yeah. So, so tell me, what had it turned into when you joined, uh, when you first got your employment there? Well, it was the mile and a half gallop. It, on certain days, the race course would be open, I think probably two days of the week, Tuesdays and Thursdays. And the jumpers would go around the race course, so, which was a mile and a half from start to finish. And uh, so and the buildings up at the race course were derelict. And what would happen was the trainers would drive up to the stands walk up steps or whatever, and look out and look onto the gallop, which obviously in the old days would look onto the race course and watch the horses gallop round and see how they've worked. Was the gallops open to any stables that wanted to exercise now? Yeah, well all the local trainers paid a certain fee to use the gallops and any outsiders would um, pay whatever it cost, in those days, I don't know, um, to use the gallops for that particular time. If they wanted to do a long gallop, they would pay whoever's in charge of the gallop. When I came to Lewis, it was Gordon Smythe who was in charge of the gallops. And he had a gallop man called Tom, who was actually deaf and dumb. He got kicked by a cow in his younger days. <laughs> so so uh, I can remember one day he was treading in the gallops with his back to us because we're going along there and of course we've had to go either side of him <laughs> must have scared the out of him <laughs> but <laughs> Paul Cyrus couldn't hear you know no, that's right yeah, so. yeah. but uh, yeah so it was just another gallop the, the, the front hill which went from the prison right the way down to the, the, the race course the bend of the race course um, and the best gallop was obviously the Oh, I don't know what they call it. We, the flat horses used to go up there on a Wednesday and Saturdays. Apparently, Charlottetown was trained on that gallop. Sure. And um, but uh, the old Lewis Racecourse was normally a jumpers gallop because it was a mile and a half long. So how long did you work there? I worked for. Oh, I came to Lewis in '71. Worked for Mick Masson, and uh, so I left there '77. It was a shame because he had some really awkward horses to ride. His, his father, Tom, was renowned for training the untrainable. And uh, so I've gone there not knowing this and uh, started work there. And of course, you've got these problem horses. And yet I've actually learned to ride. I was in racing for four years before that and thought I could ride, but found out I couldn't when I was riding these problem horses. And um, he, he had a terrific flat season. And so he lost, he had 20 odd horses, half jumpers, half flat. And um, he lost most of the jumpers because people wanted to put flat horses with him, which I wanted to be a jump jockey, so it, it didn't suit me. So um, I had to leave, which it was, it was a good three years where I learned to ride, met some really nice people. Uh, Sally was then married to Mick, and uh, Martin Burns, the head lad, and he was a fantastic rider. And it was a good three years of my life. Then I left because I was hoping to become a jump jockey, so I've you know, I went to Berris and Edmonds for three years to work for David Morley. That didn't work out, so I came back to Lewis and stayed here ever since. So I regard Lewis now as my home and lovely, perfect place. And you still involved in the horse racing? Yeah. Um, yes, uh, we've actually got a riding school, Hope in the Valley, which is at oh, the, that's uh, yours. yeah, that's ours. Yeah, and uh, my two sons were jockeys, and one still is. Uh, the oldest jockey, Jamie, he, he won the Hennessy Gold Cup and he's now working for Hesman Stud at East Hoveley and uh, a, a yearling that they, uh, a horse that they bred and he backed and rode, um, actually won yesterday so at Salisbury, so that was good, you know, so he's interested in the breeding side of things and Mark, our youngest, he's, he's ridden a lot of winners around Plumpton 
He's a jump jockey, so and still enjoying it. So yeah, horses have been my life as such from a lad in Tottenham where I'd never seen a live horse before. I'd only ever seen him on television. And I watched the race and I said, Dad, he said, yeah, I said, I want to be a jockey when I grow up. Never even seen a horse before and did it. So quite proud of that. So I rode a treble at Windsor one day. So yeah, it's all been good fun. And now my sons have done it. And, uh, and we got the riding school, which is good fun. Love it. Grandchildren's mates, I think. Yeah, they both ride, yeah. yeah, and Sophie and Ollie both ride, and Sophie comes down and helps down the ride, ride in school, so she's well into it. Where, you know, I was in the middle of Tottenham, yeah. not knowing what I was going to do, and, uh, you know, so it's all stemmed from there. Not many horses in the middle of Tottenham. Not really, no, only uh, police horses, possibly, yeah. at the football match, yeah. or uh, rag and bone men in my day, yeah, uh, good oh dear. Well, that, that's a very good thing. Thank you very much for uh, sharing your memory. A pleasure. Very, very I mean, I've, I've actually got a couple of real good, funny stories, if you want. Yeah, yeah. To Keep going. Right. We've taken a short break. Yeah, we've taken a short yeah. break. Have we finished? We're just going to add a bit. From George Windis, the Jewish Shield, Blacksmith, was it? John Winless, yeah. His daughter was to take off when you've been. She'll be the next thing. All right. And then Tom Nasson's, Mick Nasson's wife. Yes. I've got. I mean, the, carry on as if we hadn't stopped. Right, sure. So, so the Lewis race course was a fantastic gallop. The only thing about it was as you turned into the straight you're heading towards home and we one day we there's about three of us pulled out to work around the gallops we we're around the lewis race course and by the time we pulled out it was a blizzard so as i say the trainers used to go up to the grandstands to watch the horses work with an owner or whatever so we're walking around at a mile and a half start freezing to death and we thought, because well, he was going to flash his lights to say he's up there, but couldn't see anything. So we gave him 10 minutes, thought he must be up there by now. So we set off and saw you going along towards the bend. It's quite a sharp bend as well. Every time, as you turned up the straight, they would jump in the gear. <laughs> oh, then, of course, there was a blizzard, you couldn't see anything. And I'm in the middle, you've got a lad on my right hand side, who used to ride like Lester Piggott, that much stirrup leather. And of course there were two hurdles on that side, you couldn't see him. And so we were flying up there, he's jumped the two hurdles and got to the end where you couldn't stop. The head lad has pulled left, I pulled right and he's gone straight down to the prison before he jumped off. So <laughs> he lost his watch. And another time was when I rode work for Ray Howe. And uh, we walked and trotted round the gallops, the race course turned around, cantered back, and it just started to rain. And the rain was slipping through my hands, and I said to Ray's son, Paul, I said, I'm going to pull this up because I think it's going to go with me. So as I said that, it's put its head on the floor, gone, 90 miles, or it seemed like 90 miles an hour, up to the grandstands, down towards the prison. And I was going so fast, I thought, well, I'll let it go fast, and when I get to the end, it goes quite wide, so I thought I'd pull it round and come back up if it wants to go. Of course I couldn't. And if you get to the end of the gallops, it's tarmac after that, and then the road goes on to the road that, by the prison. So I thought, no, I've got to get off now, so I've jumped off it, like that. It's gone, and our eldest son was at kindergarten at the time at Falmer, and his teacher was queued up in the traffic lights from the prison up to you know, sort of chain area, that, not that far, but that, that road. And she saw this horse come off the gallops, jump the line of cars that were queued up at the traffic lights and gone down the high street, nine o'clock on a Friday morning. And they actually found it in the tunnel, not a scratch on it. And, uh, and there was a, a uh, that's my wife, there was a, a uh, lad who was actually late for work, who worked for Ray Howe, was walking down there and he actually led it all the way home from the bottom of the town. So, 
yeah, that was, it was funny afterwards when I was alright, but it wasn't actually funny at the time, but uh, it was, well, you know, yeah. one, one of those things. So but you're taking the stride of your life. You do, yeah, you take your life in your hands sometimes, but yeah, it's, it's good fun.